Hi, everyone. I'm Dana Daniels, and welcome to Show and Tell. And today, I have a very fun guest. He's a comedy magician from Las Vegas. Please welcome my good friend, Mr. Murray Salchuk. Murray, are you there? What's up, Dana? How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? Living the dream as, uh, as much as we can in this state of quarantine, you know? Yes. And uh, so uh, uh, all us magicians are now in quarantine. So what were you supposed to be doing right now? Right now, I probably would be, uh, let's see, I'm probably going down to my show, because at the Tropicana, my show is a five o'clock show. So I'm probably just going down there, getting ready to load, you know, load in and do a sound check and just kind of get stuff ready, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, or he's on the way down, he's just stop at Subway, grab a sandwich for half an hour and then go down to the theater, you know, so. You know, we can still go to Subway, I think. Yes, we can, that's yeah. fine. Yeah, and can then, you can't eat there, but yes. you can take it away. And exactly, then, and then come right. home and then, not going to pay check, which is great. So right. Not. Yes. Well, that's what we do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Man. I was supposed to be uh, actually probably just home. <laughs> okay. Today, but yeah. I was supposed to be at the castle last week. And then right. uh, this weekend, I was supposed to be uh, going to uh, Dallas to do a show uh, at a theater. So, uh, wow. yeah. But did now, they bump um, those shows now? Or did you find that the shows that you're doing now, do they bump them to like well, the Well, no, no set dates. But yeah, okay. the Dallas one said, yes, they would love to do it again. Further yeah. down the road when everything clears up. So, sure. yeah. But, you know, no no dates because yeah. no one really knows what's going on. So, and yeah, the castle, kind of the castle's a castle. So, we'll... yeah, of course. Well, same with the castle. Yeah. I've, I've talked to everybody with my shows in Vegas. We go back because I'm doing two shows in Vegas. And I have my show at the Tropicana. But then the last couple of months, uh, well, before the stop, I was doing Fantasy at the Luxor, which is like a burlesque show. So I was doing the. Oh, comedy. I remember that. Yeah. And it's been around for 20 years. It used to be Midnight Fantasy originally. And um, so I just got that which is good because I'm in now, but um, so I was doing my show at five or seven and then bump across the street. And so they're with MGM Resorts. So orig our original go back date was May 11th. Then they bumped it to June 1st. And then we got a call about two weeks ago and now it's bumped to July 1st. So, so it's a, a bit of a moving target, you know, but right. You, do, you know, well, we'll all find out. Hey, yeah, uh, so we're doing show and tell. I can't wait. I know you have a collection of, uh, celebrity items and stuff like that. I'm really anxious yeah. to see what you have to share. So what do you have? Sure. Well, a couple of things I have. I'm sitting in, in uh, my dining room kind of area here in my home and I have stuff throughout my house, like I'm sure you do, that it's like, I like to showcase my stuff, not just keep it in a, in a warehouse, you know? So behind me, this I actually have is, this is Phyllis Diller's original uh, show costume. As you know, she had many. Um, but wow. One of her is... if you, yeah, isn't that crazy? And yeah. you, if you actually pick this thing up, it is literally real gems, like mirror gems. These are real mirrors. So this probably weighs, I would say, at least a good 55 pounds, you know? Yeah. So. Wow. And she was known to wear. I don't remember wear... her wearing such uh, um, uh, elegant, I mean, outfits like that. I always thought she wore just kind of plain clothes, but. No, no, she always wore what she would do. And this is, this is the back of it as well. But. And this is actually a throwover. So she would have it made as a dress and then have something like this thrown over it. And I'm a huge fan of hers. Yeah. Just because of her style, of course, and her looks. And a lot of people realize she would buy a gown or get a gown. And then what she'd do is she would cut the gown off just above her elbows and then just above or below her knees. So she'd buy a... Uh, Phyllis is actually calling me right now, apparently. Let's see. Uh, oh, that's from the grave. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> And I have a house line, which is like I'm the only person in Las Vegas that has a house line that I never pick up because no one knows the. Uh, the you still have a, land a landline. Yeah, I, do you have a landline too? No, I don't. Oh, see, I do. I still, I just, I get the newspaper every morning, and I have a landline. The newspaper. I feel like they're going to come back one day. So. Wow. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're... Anyways, so the Phyllis Diller thing, she would buy full gowns. I went to the floor in the long sleeves, and she would get them taken to her tailor, seamstress, and get them cut off. Was it, was it Rip Taylor? Rip, exactly. exactly. Yeah. That's why they look like That's that. What it looks like. Yeah. Exactly. And so she'd make them look uh, really jester like, like a jester, because she wanted to come on stage yeah. looking really odd. And then her, she's very beautiful. She's really much a beautiful woman, as, as you know, like Lucille Ball, you know, yeah. they had to dumb themselves down a lot to be funny. Well, you these, know, if you look at some these old, characters old headshots, they, they were gorgeous women. And anyway, so and then her boots, she would get her boots made, but little short boots, and she'd uh, blow out the top of them. So it made her ankles even skinnier looking. So when she walked on stage, she had this gesture-like thing. So all of her dresses were cut short and short. So it ha and she had tassels and all this stuff. She literally came on like a gesture. So wow. So did you ever yeah. get to meet her? I did. I you know I met her 
at the Magic Castle when the last time she ever did a talk, and it was downstairs in the basement, and uh, I was performing that week, and uh, she also was selling some of her stuff off, and uh, I didn't get this there. I got this from the Debbie Reynolds auction that her son, um, Todd Fisher, you know, which is Eddie Fisher's son because she was married to Eddie Fisher, yeah. at his mom's auction when uh, Carrie and, and Debbie passed away close together. So I got that from Todd because she collected everything. And then I have a cigarette holder from um, Phyllis as well. Let me grab the cigarette holder for you. I want to see it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. the cigarette holder. That's iconic. Yeah, okay. So this, yeah. is, this is the actual thing I bought at the, um, I'm trying to get the glare off it, at the actual oh. Magic Castle. And that cigarette holder right there is, is Phyllis Diller's um, actual cigarette holder. And then that's her, of course, holding it. And then she signed it to me and all that other stuff. And oh, um, isn't that cool? That is priceless. Yeah. And so she, she, as you know, never smoked. And a lot of people don't know this, but she never smoked. So she would put a white pencil crayon in the, uh, in the cigarette holders. And she got these made, uh, the, the ones that she got made were from Austria. She liked this brand from Austria. And these are real cigarette holders, you know, the, the high-end galas and the ladies would smoke and all that stuff. And so she or, she'd order them by you know, the truckload because it was her prop, you know, and she'd either give them away sometimes, keep them. And they're not cheap. They're, they're quite expensive. But for her and her lifestyle, it was really nothing. It was her brand, you know. So anyways, I was lucky enough to get one of those that she actually used and um, from her at the Magic Castle. She did a lecture on her life. She had about 15 items that her manager at the time was selling. And she always would do these parties at her house in Beverly Hills that she owned for yeah. years. She'd have dinners, 10 people would come around, and she, a proper dinner who, who liked her, and they're usually people that are affluent in the biz. And then after dinner, she'd take them into her master bedroom, and on her bed, she would put probably seven or 10 costumes, and goes, guys, if you ever want any of these, you know, they're so much money, they're a thousand bucks a piece, or whatever the heck it is. And she had thousands of costumes. She'd just sell them off like that, because she didn't need them. You know, and that's wow. probably how Debbie Reynolds got one of hers. That's a great story. And that wow. And, and the, so you got the, the costume and you got the the cigarette holder. Yes. And I see you also have her hair. <laughs> yes. So, is it on straight? Is it, yes, it's, yes, it is. It's, Perfect. It's, uh, it's wonderful that you, you wore it today. Yeah. Well, I really <laughs> wanted to, you know, bring it into the forefront. You know what I mean? Can, can you go like this and go, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> and then talk about Fang, which she always talked about, which was her fictitious husband. So. Yeah, Fang. And, yeah. Fang, that's right. Yeah. Bang. So, and, and so a lot of people think it really was, you know, her husband, one of the husbands she's had that she always made jokes of. Most people don't realize who don't know Phyllis Diller, you know, she didn't make it till her late 40s. She was really a housewife, you know, and, uh, and lived in San Francisco and she started the Purple Onion, which is a very popular club back in San Fran for comedy and, and Yeah. Rock. Wow. And so what do you else, what else do you have there? Well, I have, well, this tuxedo behind me is, uh, really cool. It's, uh, this is Jack Codell's, uh, tuxedo. And Jack Codell is, uh, was the first uh, magician to have uh, a bird act that really manipulated birds. There are people that did uh, animal acts with birds, meaning like a dove pen and stuff where you'd have yeah. a fox and an animal. But this is the, he was the first magician to ever do a manipulation act. Um, yes. Like Channing and everybody else. And he's the one that, you know, Lance Burton um, always gives kudos to and, and everyone else. And, uh, and this is yeah. one of his tuxedos. And he wow. wore this at the Hippodrome in uh, England. And yes. uh, now his natural stage costume color was maroon. And he chose maroon because the birds he produced were parakeets. They weren't, um, oh. they weren't uh, doves. And the parakeets have different colors, but they have whites and blues and all that. Well, those colors against the maroon really pop. He also did, a, did an act with fantail pigeons later on um, at the Empire Ballroom in Chicago. And, uh, and anyways, uh, when he did the Hippodrome, it was, it was a nice show. He's also one of the first magicians to ever do magic on ice because he was just a, a really innovative uh, magician. And so basically what he did at the Hippodrome, he knew he wanted to wear his maroon suit. He gets it. The producer says, uh, we, we, we'd like you all in white. And he knew he shouldn't be wearing white because he's white, the ice is white, the suit's white, and the bird's got a lot of white in them. So you're not going to see anything. But as you know, with a producer, if they're paying the bills, you say yes and you carry on. So he didn't want to challenge him. Uh, he tried once, he said, no, no, I really want you in white. So he goes to Castle Taylor, Taylor's or Castile Taylor's in England, which is the number one tailor back in the uh, 50s in London, gets the suit made, which they paid for. He goes to use it on the ice, does two weeks, and the producer calls him in and goes, you know what, I'm watching, and we can't see anything you're doing. We can't see the birds at all. 
he says, you know, we can't use that white tuxedo. We're going to have to have you, uh, use your maroon tuxedo. And that was the end of it. He put that in the closet until about uh, five years ago. And Mary Codell is still alive. She's like 94 in, in Orlando, uh, gave me uh, his suit to put on display. And, and uh, that was the end of it. But, uh, but yeah, that's great. That cool? Yeah, I got to meet Jack a few times. Uh just a few years back before before he passed away out there yeah. in orlando he would come to the the wizards that's right go, yeah. yeah and uh, i got to know him and mary and and mary's still with us right yes yeah and she's and amazing she's mary like, is she's right adorable on isn't she something and yeah. she's right on it you know yeah and, and so beautiful yeah i was looking at your uh at your screen too in the background first of all i love your wallpaper in your uh, home that's amazing. thanks thanks that's kind of styled after the uh, golden horseshoe at disneyland yeah. yeah, and how many years did you work there? Well, at Disney or just in the horseshoe? Well, well, in the horseshoe, in the actual horseshoe, yeah. Well, the original show, I, uh, three years, I was there, but just as a understudy. So I was, I did the show quite a bit, though, but I, yeah. uh, I wasn't the regular guy. And uh, and then, because I was a magician in the park, yeah, uh, doing my own stuff. And, okay. and then, uh, so that was three years, and then I came back in the uh, 90s, and I did uh, my own show in there for eight years. Okay, that's a yeah. long time. So it was a, it was like a little home for me. Yeah, I was. That's it was one, I want to ask you a question. I just finished reading Steve Martin's book, and we yeah. all know as magicians that he started there. Did you ever get to meet him, or do you know Steve at all, or anything? Yeah, I, uh, I, I bump into him a couple times at the castle. But okay. uh, last year I was working the Magic Cabaret, mm -hmm. which is a like kind of like an extension of the castle. It's over in Santa Barbara. The oh yeah, Austin sure, yeah, club, that brand new club. Place. Yeah, I was working there. Uh, last year, just uh, the week of Fourth uh, of July, mm -hmm. and Steve Martin was in the audience. Wow! And so, yeah, and so, and I got to do my whole show. And afterwards, he, when the crowd left, he was he stayed there, and he came back to talk to me, and loved the show. And uh, I, so we started talking about Disneyland. I told him that I used to do the horseshoe, and he just lit up and he was asking me, "Oh, did you do this joke? Did you do that joke?" Did you do that? <laughs> yeah, he remembers all the jokes they did. And I yeah. said, well, I did that one and I didn't do that one. And, I, you know, yeah. And then, uh, and then he wrote me a joke. Wow. Really? What was the for joke? my act? Yeah. And the only thing is I don't tell people what the joke is because it kind of pertains to a certain trick and a certain situation. So okay. it really doesn't make it. So you need to see everything at the same time. Yeah. I need to see the, the yeah. trick, but it's for sure. a, a trick I do with the, I don't actually, I don't, it's not, it doesn't involve the bird, but it's a trick mm -hmm. I do with the balloon. So, yeah. Uh, but a, a mental flip is the trick. But, um, That's great. Cause your style is similar to Steve Martin's as well. I feel, you know what I mean? Well, he was a big influence. So, so yeah. yeah. Okay. Sometimes yeah. I have to kind of watch that. So. Yeah, no, I think it's a compliment. Yeah. It's great. It's not, you know, he's a legend, you know, and, and, and right. magic, you're a legend as well. You've been doing it forever. Oh, you know? so, well. Luigi. <laughs> the bird. I'm on my third bird, so. Third, third Luigi. Is it still Luigi every time or? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. They have their own individual <laughs> names, but yeah, they're yeah. always Luigi. They have stage names, Luigi. Of course. Except for the first one. The first one was Luigi. The original. On off. Yeah, <laughs> the original. Yeah. Well, great. Hey, let me show you something. I want to see something. You, your house looks so cool uh, with just right. where you're sitting there. Show me I'm something just exciting. Pick up my phone, and yep. I was trying to figure out. Let's see what do we show. And uh, I have over here. I love your pool table too. Thank right. you. Thank you. Uh, right over here, if we can see it. Yep. That there. Uh, these are theater seats. And wow. these used to be. Uh, yeah, they're in poor condition, but I don't want to change it because these used to be. Uh, in the screening room at MGM Studios. No way. And so a lot of famous butts sat in these chairs. That's amazing. I don't how, know how, who's how, butt, but. <laughs> they go back, what, 1930s? It, way back. It, I was, it, from the design, I, it looks that way. Yeah. But I don't have an exact year of when these were there. I mean, they were there for a long time. Yeah. And, uh, and then, I guess, when they renovated the seating there and everything, eventually. Yeah. Anyways, the, uh, I, I got three of them. How did you get them? Did you go to an auction or do you know somebody? No, it was uh, through an antique dealer. Okay. Yeah, he picked them up, he said. So he, That's amazing. apparently he also used to work for the studio. Okay. And uh, so he picked those up and I don't know how many he had. He's probably been selling them off, you know. Sure. So. But, I love that. That's really cool. And I like yeah. the fact, do you ever use them or you just have them kind of there? Because I'd be scared to use them, you know? Sometimes people, sure. I can have a party here. Yeah. yeah. Some, some people will sit there, but sure. with the position they're in now, it's not. Um, a little cozy. It's a little cozy back there so that they don't get sat in too much. They're more for looks. Sure. But, sure. Yeah. You know, also you could put those clear, uh, they have custom covers, you know, for a lot of 
collectibles, you know, the, clear, the, the stuff that grandma and grandpa used to put in all their sure. furniture. Oh, you know? yes. And you could do that, still show and they can use them. You can wipe them off, you know? So. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. All right. Know. Hey, Murray, thanks a lot for uh, sharing all that cool stuff. I thanks really for having me it. on. Yeah, and uh, I'd love to have you back and, sure. and show us some more. I know I you probably to. have tons of more stuff and uh, really yeah. appreciate it. Everyone, uh, give a nice, uh, I don't know how, I always get a mirror effect, so I'm going to go like this. <laughs> Oh, nice shot of your computer. You're welcome. <laughs> Let's give a big thank you to Murray Sajak. Bye, Murray. Thanks, Dana. Have a good one, man. Stay safe. Stay well, okay?